Hello, welcome to another episode of Super Admins Hangouts. This is what this is where we inspire you with stories from super admins and give you productivity and career tools, tips and tricks that will help you thrive and excel in your career. My name is Becca and I'm your hangout business. Super Admins Hangout is powered by Office Habit Training and Consulting Limited and supported by the network of administrative professionals of Ghana and Bia. Today I'm super excited to be hanging out with Rebecca all the way from Kenya. Before I bring Rebecca to the virtual stage, let me read to you her bio. Rebecca has 14 years of work experience in various sectors, including banking, insurance, and FMCG, mainly in operations, project management, customer excellence, and senior level management support, into brackets, C suite assistant. She is driven by her passion for administrative profession and saw so it's important to create opportunities for junior level initiates to thrive and excel in their career and profession through the strategic executive assistant africa platform it is her firm belief that through capacity building skills training embracing different mindsets and teachable attitudes in the evolving market all administrative professionals have the potential to grow into strategic business partners Rebecca is currently a virtual assistant, entrepreneur, and a member of Empower African Business Network. Hello, Rebecca. Welcome to Super Admins Hangout. I'm so excited to be hanging out with you today. Mm. I now, am super excited as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for making the time for this um, chat. First of all, I would like you to go ahead and introduce yourself because I believe you have a lot of things ongoing and you'd be better place to, to, to do your, your introduction instead of me doing it in your place. So go ahead okay. and introduce yourself to us briefly. Okay, Rebecca, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and uh, really grateful for you to take the time to have this conversation with me, to be able to hang out with me. I'm very excited about that. And uh, considering you're also my namesake. Yes. So yes. <laughs> really, that's very coincidental in a nice way. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm Rebecca Ajoi Majiwa from Kenya. Nairobi is where I reside currently. So um, a bit about myself, I'm uh, as an administrative professional. I have been um, in various, uh, I've uh, managed in various functions of uh, the administrative field. And uh, currently I'm a virtual assistant. I'm also an entrepreneur and a strong believer in uh, uh, making Africa better. So I'm also in Empower Africa uh, network, business networks. Okay. And uh, that's uh, vaguely um, what I'm currently uh, all about. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Looks like we just, uh, it's not only that we have our name, we have a common name, but uh, it looks like we have a lot of things in common. And I believe um, <laughs> as, we, as, as we continue with the conversation, we'll see that yeah. there's a lot of things that we, we share in common. And I'm also super excited to have you with us. Okay, so let me move on to my first question. Briefly, what has... Uh, what walk us through your journey, your career journey, how you started your career and to where okay, so um so I started my career right after my first degree. I got my first degree from uh, university, the Maseno University here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So this was a degree in business administration with a major in finance. So right after my graduation, I was lucky enough to get absorbed into Equity Bank. That was my first um, employer. So I went there as an operations officer, an operations, uh, um, an operations uh, officer in the, in the banking industry. So this 
this is where we were doing all the rounds in various departments, just getting a footing of where you really feel like you're, you can be able to now uh, concentrate and uh, put your focus on in terms of career. So I did teller, teller positions, that's the cashier. I did account opening. I did a bit of admin front office. I did back office. So various departments, just getting to have a glimpse of what exactly I wanted to be. So from there, I then moved to Phoenix of East Africa as an branch accountant. So this time I was doing my CPA um, uh, uh, courses as well. So I was trying to focus more on uh, doing a concentrative course and just getting a pathway of where I wanted my career to lead me into. So at Phoenix of East Africa, as I was doing the branch, I mean, uh, the accounting uh, aspect of it, I was also supporting the underwriting and insurance aviation manager for uh, for East Africa. So this is where I started getting this passion for leaning more onto the administrative side. So you see, I was juggling between being a branch accountant, getting to know more of insurance, but I was really feeling like I was passionate about the admin aspect of it because I was working very closely with him, supporting him in a lot of research work, supporting him in a lot of admin work. And this is where I started just leaning towards that direction. So as I was at Phoenix, I started keeping my ears and eyes open for opportunities to just grow towards that direction. I wanted to one day become a PA, you know, and just see how that would go. So um, I worked very briefly in a company called TV Insurance uh, Company. So when I was there, I was actually just now doing admin, more of admin work. So I was supporting the owner of the company. It was a small insurance company. So of course doing underwriting duties as well because I was in an insurance company but leaning more towards the side of admin so at this point this was around 2014 mm -hmm. so at this point is when now I started even looking into um, recruitment firms trying to see if I could be able to get opportunities to become a PA trying to read by myself get to know what a PA does you know just get to educate myself at the same time be able to support the people I was working with in terms of admin duties mm -hmm. and I really realized that this is what I wanted to focus put my focus more on so this is when I got an opportunity to work at uh, the Unilever um, Unilever Kenya company mm -hmm. so I joined Unilever Kenya as a, a PA to the vice president personal care Africa so she was a lady Deborah Maloa. She's actually currently in Coca-Cola as the franchise manager for Central Africa, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so working with Deborah was like, I was thrown into, you know, the deep end because she was very busy and it was a very busy role. It was a six months contract only, actually. So I left a permanent job to go into a six months contract, but I had a lot of belief in myself. Plus, I believe that the passion I had, I was just going to excel at it. So, you know, I went into it and I really put all my foot forward. I put everything I had into it and I really learned a lot in the role. So I worked with Deborah for about three years, surprisingly, after going in for a six months contract. So it kept being renewed and renewed. And at the end of it, I became now permanent. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was working for her as well, an opportunity came up in the company for uh, the PA. Actually, no, this was an executive assistant position. So it was more senior than a personal assistant um, mm -hmm. uh, position. So executive assistant to the East Africa and Emerging Markets CEO. So this was now a um, C-suit assistant role. Mm -hmm. So I also, uh, it was a uh, they were recruiting internally and externally, but of course I put in my CV as well. And I was interviewed for the role and I got the position. Yeah. So this is where I was at uh, for the last three years until 2020, that's December, 2020. So working for the chief executive assistant of, I mean, as a, as a, uh, as, I mean, an executive assistant to the chief um, CEO, chief executive officer. Okay. So from then, uh, there was a lot of changes and uh, that's when I went into the virtual assistant role, which I have been handling to date. So that's just vaguely uh, through my career path <laughs> to <Wow>. date. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it's an interesting story and interesting journey. <laughs> I knew we had a lot in common, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before I also started my, I think before I had my first um, assistant role, I actually also transitioned from a banking um, Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> That's really, yeah really. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
and just um, as you you shared um i also moved from a permanent position then took up a one year contract oh. i believe yeah <laughs> and, and that was my first experience and just as you you you, you narrated i also had to now yeah. you know i mean put my best foot forward and also push to be able to i mean stay on the job even after the one year so <laughs> i can relate to your story yeah i guess it's all about self-belief and just putting all you have into it there's nothing that you cannot achieve it's it's just all about being very persistent and yeah. just wanting something hard enough to be able to just put everything into it and get it done yeah interesting yeah okay <laughs> so my next question what did what share with us your experience working as an assistant in the conflict how was it so my experience working as an assistant in multinational companies, um, it, it, it took a lot of learning. You had to yeah. really yeah. Uh, take, it, take the initiative upon yourself to learn a lot mm -hmm. during a very short frame, framed framework of time because um, these are companies that are very busy, very fast-paced environment. And there's no one who will sit down and start now giving you how to do it, you know, like the right direction to do it. You have to do a lot of on-the-job training, on-the-job learning, learning as you go on. Mm -hmm. So my experience, I could say, was uh, that I really had to, to be very focused, mm -hmm. to learn to very fast and just to be able to keep myself updated with the market trends because okay. every day the roles of the assistant are evolving and uh, especially in the multinational companies you're expected to do so much more than administrative duties it's not all about calendar management and travel and all that yeah. there's so much more expectation so okay. what i learned is that you have to take the initiative to be able to do it yourself and you have to remain relevant and so um but besides that now that i've not said the fun part of it of course uh, i loved the fact that it was uh, um i mean working for corporate organizations with a lot of departments you get to interact with a lot of departments and it's it's a very wide scope of learning you can be able to know so much if you just have the interest and you're just willing to learn yeah yeah yeah, so, yeah that's in a nutshell <laughs> absolutely um especially when you 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 don't have a secretarial background and then you find yourself exactly. I mean, <laughs> in the PA role then that means you have to do a lot of um, learning by yourself because as you said yes. nobody is going to teach you how to play your role you need to learn exactly. on the job yeah yeah, you have to learn on the job. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what did you find most challenging about the role? I mean, in corporate? Um, what I could say is the fact that, uh, as we've said, there's no one who will teach you these things. Yeah. There's no school that you will go to where you'll be taught how to become a PA. Yeah. There's no defined growth path of a PA. You have to create the opportunities for yourself. Yeah. So you're the one to try and expand your role. You're the one to try and influence those positions to come along, you see? Yeah. Like, for example, when I was a PA, I knew I could become maybe an executive assistant. But I didn't know there was also a strategic assistant waiting for yeah. me that I could also become, you know? Yeah. But now, what makes you stand out and just be able to be promoted or be looked at as a, as a strategic assistant or as an executive assistant and as opposed to just a PA, you get? So that was what I found challenging, the fact that you have to actually take the initiative to learn this yourself. There are very few courses for PAs, especially for in organizations. They won't like take you for a PA training course. And yeah. that's why it's, it's, it's really good that of late, we have so many people coming up and just having courses for PAs and courses for administratives to be able to grow. Yeah. So determining your growth path by yourself and just being able to remain relevant and being able to expand your, your area of expertise by yourself. No one actually makes the opportunity for, yourself, for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Now that we've looked at the challenges, what about um, the fun part? What was so exciting about the role? <laughs> the fun part, of course, was interacting with the high level executives. I found that very interesting. Mm -hmm. It really gives you some notion of confidence. If, mm -hmm. if you take it positively, it, it, uh, it, it makes you also be, be very aware that you need to sharpen so many skills that you have, even just your communication skills, which sometimes we take very lightly. Just being able to address people, being able to have that confidence to, to just be able to, to uh, make decisions, you know? So yeah. the fact that 
yeah, yeah, being being involved with the high level executives was something that I found very, very intriguing and very exciting. And also the fact that I was able to interact with many departments at the same time. If my role was maybe in only procurement or in supply chain doing something, then maybe this is the only thing I would have come out with in the corporate world. But the fact that I was able to work with uh, I, I, I was able to interact with direct was able to interact with directors from various functions and this helped me to learn so much more about different various uh, functions of the business i would know a lot about procurement i would interact with suppliers i would do a lot of pr with the communications department i would do a lot of marketing you know so it was really um eye-opening and it was really it made me all rounded in in some aspects so that's something that was very exciting for me working in this role that's that's very very true <laughs> that's very true and yeah. i can totally relate to that okay so my next question <laughs> my next question is that um why did you then decide to ditch corporate to start your own um, va business if i should put it now you're a virtual assistant right yes and, and, and it's, so it's, it's a business for you is that not it because you're not working for a particular company Yes, I'm not working for a particular company currently. Okay. So what I would say, I didn't, I can't quite call it ditching <laughs> because uh, <laughs> because uh, it's something that I've been looking at from uh, a few years back, just looking at as a, an end goal, you know, like uh, I, I always looked at myself as, as getting into my own business at some point, yeah, but uh, I, I didn't have a precise timeline, okay. but I guess I needed maybe that, um, uh, I needed that push mm -hmm. and uh, circumstantial push, I would call it. So just because uh, having been unemployed by end of last year, then I thought of it and I was like, now I have an opportunity to actually look into this and actually put my mind into, put my focus into building this business. So I wanted to build it up, see how it goes. And it's something that I would like to continue with in the long run, of course, but I'm not totally um, putting off employment as a, a per se, but the end goal, of course, is to continue as a virtual assistant. Yeah, so that's how I ended up um, awesome. getting into it. Great. And yeah. I'm excited that you decided to um, take that route because for me, um, yes. if you've been an admin before, and then, um, I mean, you don't have a job, you have your skills that you can sell to other businesses. So why not um, look at virtual assisting as an alternative um, source of employment? And that is what I always tell people I come across, people who have been in the profession and have currently lost their job, maybe due to the pandemic, you know, yes. and they are sitting at home and looking for the next job. I mean, you have the yeah. skills. There are businesses looking for virtual assistant why don't exactly. you i mean put your skills together and know what you want you want to offer and then approach these businesses to assist them yeah Very and i also true. believe it's becoming uh, uh, the order of the day now a, a lot yeah. of people are now getting to know um that virtual assistant exists and they are ready to provide their services to small businesses and i mean corporate as well Very okay true. so how, how how different it is you being self-employed now as a virtual assistant and being an assistant in corporate what is the difference okay so um the, the main difference i would say is time management because you're managing your own time you're the one to now decide on how you're going to be able to manage your time keep your clients happy mm -hmm. and at the same time you're the one to determine your income because if you're going to handle one client the whole day then your income is going to be that if you're going to be able to juggle between different clients so you know you're, you're able to actually um work out your your schedule plus your income plus just generally your business you're the one who is the business owner so it's it's really different also it, it really requires a lot of discipline because no one is chasing you around if you don't show up for your client then you lose that client so okay. it's all on you're the one to determine how the how it goes <laughs> <laughs> interesting i like the i mean the the, the differences that you you brought up it's, it's very very true so now you are your own boss you decide the time yeah. that you work um, you decide the time not to work you decide the number of um uh, um, people you want to work for and all that and, 
I mean, as you said, depending on how you manage your time, that is how much money you earn. So, exactly. <laughs> interesting. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. But how is the demand when it comes to like um, virtual assistant? For how virtual is the assistant. demand in Ke Kenya? So I would say it's not. Um, it, the market is still very um, skeptical about having virtual assistants. I would I would say skeptical because I think. There's just not awareness is not so much yeah. as uh, as as compared to I think like in, in the other maybe mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I would say is that you know you sometimes you never know that you need help yeah. until help actually presents itself to you. Yeah. So um, what I would say to virtual assistants out there, especially the ones in our country here in Kenya, is that the demand is actually that it is for you to create. It's just the way we say opportunities. You know, you cannot say that that you're waiting for an opportunity to present itself. You're the one to actually make uh, an environment that is conducive for that opportunity to exist. Yeah. So by, by just through talking to people who you want as your potential clients, through trying to show them um, what, what you can be able to do for them extra, that, that, that would save their time for them to be able to do more strategic thinking in their organization and strategic, um, more, more things that, that are concerned with business development for them. This will already create that impact of, they'll see that they have the need for to have a virtual assistant. Yeah. So the demand is not really that much, but I'm sure with the, with the VS being there, the virtual assistants need to be there in the market first for them to be able to go out there and create that need for their services. Okay, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and um, I think it's not just in Kenya. I think Ghana is the same thing in Ghana here. So, um, yeah. yeah, the need is there, but as you said, some, some people are not aware that they can get... Um, exactly, they can get those services. Those, those services, yeah, are, are available here. And um, as you said, it's up to the virtual assistant to, to let the clients know that they, 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 they need their services. Interesting. Okay, yeah. so what are some of the challenges that um, you face as a virtual assistant? As a virtual assistant, um, the challenges would be, of course, that lack of awareness. Mm -hmm. So you really need to just um, go out and actually push so hard to be able to get the clients okay. to see the need. Yeah. And then another challenge would be maintaining the clients. Even after getting the clients, you know, with the, especially after this pandemic issue and all, people are always looking to cut costs. Yeah. So you may have clients at the beginning and then even as you do for them these things, they still feel like maybe they can be able to do for themselves just to cut on some costs, you know. So basically it's about um, the environment, the market environment at every different changing time that causes the, um, the, the, this, this, this problem of maybe now being able to maintain the clients. Yeah, and, and even just looking for the clients and being able to convince them that they can be able to make use of your services as opposed to doing these things by themselves okay absolutely thanks <laughs> so i can see you're, you're getting in the dark now yeah yeah since my light is off can you imagine i, I was, I was hoping by now it should be on but it's not um no but it's looking still... very bad no 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 we are still okay. good <laughs> okay good. yeah actually it's a good background <laughs> Interesting. Interesting one. <laughs> In fact, I, I, now, now I'm using the, the lights from my phone. <laughs> I also sat outside so that we have a nice hangout under the stars. Yeah, yeah, under the stars. I, I, and unfortunately, the moon is not up. Maybe it would have given me some light. <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. Yeah. Still... Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me move on quickly. Move on to my next question. So, what type of skills does one need to have uh, to have to start a virtual assistant business? Okay, so most importantly, you need to be very organized because you're, you're juggling between very many clients. Okay. So for you to juggle between so many clients, you have to be very organized and be able to manage all these people and keep them satisfied. Mm -hmm. Another one is time management, as I said, because you're managing yeah. your own time. Yeah. You're not good at time management, then there's no way you'll be able to juggle these things and finish all your work in good time. Mm -hmm. And that is communication skills. It's very important to be able to communicate to the client, make them see the need for an assistant, you know. Yeah. So just being able to vocally communicate and even just your writing skills and everything needs to be 
top notch. So communication skills is very important, I would say. So those would be the top three for me. But of course, uh, you have to be also very proactive, yeah. try to gauge the client needs and just be able to anticipate their needs. As more, The more you, you get more clients, then you can be able to just see what, what you need to do without having to be reminded every other time. And that also really works in your favor in maintaining clients because then they'll see the need for you to be there. Wow. Yeah, so this would be In some of my and I think these are skills that every administrative professional, whether you're working in corporate or not, is you a must-have skill. You have to be yeah. you have yeah. to communicate, yeah. you have to be yeah. yeah. organized, yeah. you have to, be organized. You have to communicate, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, so essential skills, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so yeah. I know um, you have a network. Yes, I don't know I do. whether it's is it a group of administrative professional? Are they virtual assistants or I mean, are they both? So, uh, yes. <laughs> so this is um, it's a, a platform for administrative professionals in yeah. Africa. In Africa. So. Okay. Uh, Yes, in Africa. So it's not only PAs, it's not only EAs, it's, yeah. it's just all, everyone who is already an administrative professional okay. and those people who are looking to become administrative professionals, okay. those who just come out of school and they're they are thinking of becoming PAs or okay. joining a green and they're wondering how to begin because as we said, there's that challenge of no school where you go and you're taught how to become a PA or an EA. So this is why I got motivated to open this platform, mm -hmm. just for those who are already in the profession to be able to grow together, change, exchange ideas, and most importantly, those ones who have just joined the profession to be able to know the way forward, to be able to set a career growth path for themselves. You know, at least we can give them now our stories, let them know how you can be able to create opportunities in the organization for yourself, and even opportunities for your own business by becoming a virtual assistant. So that is how we are all, we have now all these administrative professionals in one group. So we have them, we have a, a platform on Facebook, okay. the Strategic Educative Assistant Africa. We have a platform on LinkedIn and we have a WhatsApp group where we even exchange fast ideas quickly during the day if you need any help with anything you're running. And uh, we are also registering to become a body of professional assistants, like a registered body so that people can be able to register and just be professionally acknowledged as administrative professionals. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's a very big vision because it's not just a network for uh, administrative professionals in Kenya alone, but I mean, it's no, Africa no, no. in They're general. All of Africa. Wow. Actually, we have a lot of people from all of Africa, Nigeria, Gambia, Ghana, everywhere, Tanzania, wow. South Africa, wow. everywhere. <laughs> we have so many people in the network okay. and, and we're hoping to have even more people just so okay. that we can bring all, all professionals together. We're hoping to have certified courses, you know, so that we can be able to also grow in the learning, in the learning sector. We usually have learning sections, I mean, sessions every Thursday. These um, are just sessions of different topics, essential topics coming professional and we have professionals in different departments HR coming to talk to us from different um, organizations and yeah we, we've been doing them virtually interesting so that's a, about the platform yeah interesting so I think um, when I post this video I'm, I, I will need to take the links to um, this platform here I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll post it along with the video and then if um, anyone who is interested can just um, can check, join check, you. Yeah, can join you. Can join you. Yes, yeah, sure. interesting. Okay, yeah. so what is what advice will you give to an aspiring virtual assistant? Um, an aspiring virtual assistant, I'll tell them start immediately. If you want to start, you just there's no time to start. You'll keep postponing and postponing. Yeah. There's never a to start so what I would say uh, don't wait for that push like I did mm -hmm. you can always juggle between work and I mean we are people who administrative professionals are all multitaskers we know how to multitask mm -hmm. so I'm sure you can be able to handle virtual assistant roles here and there even as you continue with your employment if that's okay of course with your employer so I would I would also advise uh, people who want to get into the virtual assistant space that it's 
as you say, Nelly, which was very correct, um, it's, it's about your skills. You already have the skill set. So don't sit back and maybe um, because you are unemployed and wonder now when is my next employment coming through and yet you have the skills with you. Yeah. Just keep reading. Reading really helps. Just keep reading. Read on the internet. Take opportunities of learning. Join platforms like the ones we have um, for administrative professionals. Network. Your network is your network. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you have your network, people who you can be able to exchange ideas with, and uh, that is how you'll be able to even just establish how to begin with your VA um, virtual assistant business. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rebecca. <laughs> you really <laughs> shared a lot with us um, today, and I believe anybody watching this video will get inspiration from it yeah. and yeah. will be able to carry out all the these dumb nuggets that you've shared <laughs> okay so if somebody wants to reach out to you what will be the best way to do that so the best way would be through my linkedin profile okay. so rebecca majima that's on linkedin okay. um through the strategic executive assistant platform both on facebook and on linkedin mm -hmm. and then my gmail address is rebecca majua at gmail.com okay. we can just uh, I'll, I'll drop you a note on that okay. and then i also have the strategic executive assistant uh, africa at gmail.com so all those you can reach me through okay. but the quickest would be on my linkedin yeah. just Throw me a request. Yeah. I'll accept. I really like expanding my network. So <laughs> I'm always eager to accept re uh, requests. Then drop me a note and we can always connect. Awesome. Thank you so much once again, Rebecca. I'm really, really excited that we got to have this conversation, even under the difficult situation. <laughs> I know. Well, I started off with a lot of drama, but I'm glad we managed. Yes, we managed. Yeah. And my light has still not come on. So it looks like now I'm in the dark, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's okay yeah yeah it's okay what is important is the content and not um, how we look and all that and i believe exactly. yeah exactly. this is going to be a blessing to anybody who watches it as an administrative professionals yeah all right thank you once again and i believe we'll be having more conversations like this definitely <laughs> thank okay. you so much for having me you are welcome dear all right, all right. you have a good evening thank you i wish you same bye thank you. <laughs> bye, -bye.